Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Chick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Chick. This is the wonderful outdoors, and I am on day three of the quest for a giant, giant lake trout. I'm still set up where I was in my last video. I'm on day three, like I said, and yeah, I don't know. We'll see how today goes. If it's slower, I might pick a new spot. If it's good, I might keep fishing it. That's still, un that's still undecided. But what I do know today is the goal is to talk about locations, where to find them in a lake, and maybe a couple of uh, lakes too that I highly recommend to fish. So we will get inside and get fishing. I did bring my breakfast with me this morning. I'm gonna toast a bagel on the heater and uh, get at her. I'm excited. Day three, lake trout, let's do it. I should probably drop a line, I'm guessing. Blueberry bagel, strawberry cream cheese, probably all over my face. Mmm. Toasted on the heater. So good. So good. Oh, oh. Little guy just showed up right on the tube. He came, he came down the spine, which is something I'll talk about here in a little bit. Am I gonna actually land this one? Got a big tube on. And normally, they'll they'll spit these out right at the hull. Called that one. Called that one. He just never ever had the bait, or never had the hook. I should say. He definitely had the bait. Oh, he's cleaning off my camera lens, and the fish is rising off the bottom. Come on, looks decent. He doesn't look crazy small. Come on. Come on. Oh, he just ate it. Nice, just ate it. I don't think it's a bad fish. Like, I think it's a medium. I think. I think. I don't know for sure. I never I never saw it originally when it came first up. Oh, come on. I think I got that hook buried. I'm pretty good. I think it's a medium-sized fish. Like I said, I was cleaning off my camera lens here, so it's a little bit foggy still. But, nice. Okay. Well, it's definitely not a small it's not a small fish. I think it's medium. I'm on my biggest tube I have here. The six and a half inch big mama. Okay. I don't know size for sure. Like it's acting like a bigger fish there for sure. I had a pretty loose drag there. I backed it off quite a bit. He just wasn't, he wasn't giving, he wasn't giving. So I just had to give it a little bit. Okay, got him down there at 30 feet. We'll probably kick his butt pretty quick, I'm thinking, because it's a, I think it's a medium. Nice. That camera is foggy. Foggy, foggy. So I can't really do much with that. Let him run for a minute there. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's got a little bit of weight to him. <laughs> a fun way to start the day, right? With a nicer fish. Like, first day, no big fish. Second day less action waited till like ooh, waited till like i think four o'clock before i finally caught a bigger one all there all day and now this is the first fish this fish followed it up for a long time before he finally ate it and i felt him bump huh well maybe i miss maybe i'm misjudging this fish a little bit drag is loose though to tighten it up when i want to bring him in but just trying to keep this oh yeah, when he runs, we're gonna clean this lens here again. Trying to keep it going. First thing in the morning, when the camera's cold and the shack's warm, it's hard to keep that camera thawed out. Okay, buddy, got you at 30 feet. Feels decent. Like I said, not giant, but definitely nice. Oh, lake trout are the best. Well, this is fish like this this oh he did a uh, crazy thing under the ice there a fish like this this early in the morning is making me think about just staying at the spot for a few more days possibly okay we're getting close i think there's my leader that's my leader can't really use that ca on camera right now anyway so oh yeah oh Look at that raw just doubled. Whew. That's a lot of stress. 
on that rod and it holds up pretty well the slugger maybe i underestimated this fish sometimes i've had some pretty big ones just like not fight crazy hard right they're big and sluggish whereas the fish from yesterday like just kicked my butt 25 feet and this one's just kind of hanging around here okay 20 feet it's so cool they'll tell on live imaging where they are that camera is foggy okay we got we got our leader again here i'm gonna see him right away i'm gonna stand up so i can possibly see him it's not the smartest thing in the world to do and then and then we're gonna try not to bounce them off the bottom of the ice at all right oh at the stand there so i didn't <clears throat> give him any slack okay i'm excited oh yeah oh yeah man i never got a good look at him but he looked decent looked decent just come up ever so gentle buddy let's not bang your nose off that ice it's a nice one it's a nice one come on easy easy you're gonna lose a fish this is usually where it's gonna happen it's right here at the bottom of the ice oh come on he is not happy he's not here he comes here he comes it's a nice fish it's a nice fish like i said it's not a giant one but it's a nice one. Oh, come on come on come on okay okay that's a good one right there he's fat oh tube jig oh that camera it's foggy okay oh easy girl okay that camera's gonna fog again so we'll show it off quick it's a nice one right there i'll measure it i'm thinking 38 ish probably beautiful fish easy girl easy easy i know you're lively i know i know i know uh well bigger than 38 actually come on uh, 30 39 and a quarter so we'll say 39 ish because i've got to bend the bump board Oof. <laughs> okay well there's a fun way to start beautiful 39 inch lake trout like i said not a great great big one but a beautiful fish i'll take that any any day any day oh amazing amazing and there she goes like a rocket i'm gonna try to follow her look at her. she's rocketing <laughs> she's mad that is awesome well that's a fun start wicked well i apologize i probably had bad audio for that first clip possibly even the intro i had my mic clipped underneath on my bibs when i switched to a hoodie from my jacket to fish in the shack and i forgot to readjust the mic so apologies for probably some medium audio at the start of the video but we're back on track now so lake trout spots there's honestly so many different types of structure you can fish every lake is going to be a little bit different too you're going to have to spend time in that lake to try to figure it out but I'll just go through all of the structure, the types of structure that I fish. Today, I'm on what I consider a, a spine. So running here, I think it's like north to south or something like that. There's this big long spine that kind of caps out at about 70 feet. And off of each side of this spine, it drops off. One side drops off a little bit further than the other. Like one side goes like 100, 120, 120 feet. And the other side is 80 feet so on top of that spine can be a throne where they come up they push bait fish they come up there they feed on here there's some there's the odd rock kind of kicking around too just to give you a little bit of transition so that's that's one spot is a spine now fish will travel it sometimes up and down a lot of times i find they come up from deeper water and then over top of the spine like that so you could have like a group of four people all along the spine and because the way they come up from the deeper side up on the spine and back down you're probably not going to hurt each other for fishing in terms of like getting in each other's way that being said i think that last fish i wasn't sure because i was playing around the camera 
it came right onto the bait. So that means it was probably traveling down the spine. So you could obviously hurt each other in terms of being set up along the spine. So it's good like to kind of spread out a bit. One guy on this side of the spine, one guy on that side of the spine, spine kind of stagger yourself. But for the first spot, spines. I'll catch a couple more fish hopefully, and we'll talk about another type of structure again. It's definitely interested in it. I'm sure if I had a smaller bait on, I'd have this fish connected already that's why it's nice when you have two people one guy can fish a bigger bait one guy can fish a smaller bait and then you can kind of trade off too you can put some fish on the ice the, the hardest thing with like right now is i switch small to a small bait being alone this is and catch that fish and as i'm fighting that fish or dealing with it type of thing a bigger mark comes in and i'm not ready for that bigger mark that's that's the tough part like, yes, I can catch him with the bigger tube right now, but if I like see a bigger mark, also I can pull away from it or anything like that, right? Like I'm not trying to race up to get my, my tube to get back down there for that bigger fish. So I'm a very selective fisherman when it comes to that. I like to just put my time in and wait for the bigger fish to come by. I don't need to catch every single lake trout in the lake. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It's fun. It's fun to catch fish. It's good action, right? But I'm not in a hurry to catch every fish. Oh, fish here. A small guy, small to medium guy. Not a 39 incher, for sure. There's another fish up higher here on the left too. That one's really high in the water column. Still have the big tube on. Lake trout can be all over the place, like all over in the water column. That's why live imaging is so nice. You can really get a better feel for what's going on, but you should never like keep your jig always just in one place. You should be reeling up, dropping down, reeling up, dropping down. A lot of times when you're dropping down, that's when those fish, like the, especially like the bigger ones, will see your bait from a distance and they'll come over. So even though the bigger fish usually are caught in that bottom, like 20, 20 feet of the water column, the them seeing your bait drop from a, a distance is uh, a benefit of that for sure and it'll draw them over so don't always just fish the bottom even for the bigger ones work that water column consistently dropping down the big spoon for a little bit the big spoon the insanity pepper the magnum dinner bell it's fluttering out to the side there there's a fish out there at 40 feet, spoons at 15. Bounce it back here to the center. Oh, here comes a fish streaking in. Oh, swing and a miss. It's a big hook set for a little fish, Clayton. Big hook set, little fish. Rep his lips. Rip his lips. It is important to give a good hook set. The bigger fish, when they come up and they eat, you almost want to wait till they level and even slightly start to turn down a bit. Like you don't want them to spit it out either, but if I have a big fish chasing me up and it eats, I'm waiting till it levels a little bit and then I'm jacking them because you don't really want to set the hook when it's going the same direction. The little ones, yeah, whatever. They just like pick, ha, let go, pick, let go, pick, let go. But the big ones will usually swallow that hole too in their mouth. And I just wait till they kind of eat it. You'll see when I'm reeling, if you watch my rod, I don't know if I ever show clips of it, but it's like I'm reeling up and all of a sudden my rod starts to just like load a little bit. Then I know it's time to give it to the fish. There was a comment I did, I, I think it was on TikTok where it's like, the fish was on for so long or whatever. Well, it wasn't on that long. And I was just waiting for the rod to load just like a little, little bit. Oh, clay, clay, I, the day's a puppy yet. It's only 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock, I think. 11.22. And one fish only. Oh, boy. Slower day for numbers, for sure. Hope they just get, like, you know, six 39 inches type of thing, and it'll be a good day. Oh, fish just ate it. Fish just dropped it. Come on, little guy. Come on. Come on. Boom! question is am i going to land it or will i lose it 
This could be my second landed fish of the day, possibly. Little guys, like I've stated so much, are always harder to land with one single tube jig hook type of thing. Okay, where are you, buddy? Where are you? This fish might not be as, as small as I thought. Like, it's not a baby. It's not big, but it's not like a... It's not a baby one, I don't think. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I could have him hooked funny, too, because it doesn't look that big. It's coming up funny. <laughs> he can swim down in the hole. Come here. He's coming up backwards. He's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. Well, average size today is definitely okay easy 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 he's slipping on me he's slipping tube jig out well second lake of the day it's a pile of energy not a bad one at all really it's a good fish it is just it's tensing up in my hand so bad because it wanted to go so it's better off i just get it back right away Whew. well fish two landed it's a good day okay we'll keep on rolling Never know, it's, uh, it is later, it's 11.47 and it's slower this morning so far, but I'll take the average size that I have so far over action any day. It's good. So let's continue with another spot. Another spot that I really like is a flat that's somewhere usually between like 50 to 70 feet and on that flat might be some like scattered rocks boulders etc and then the edge of the flat kind of will drop off into deeper water and a pretty good drop off right and then sometimes you can even have that flat where uh, on the other side of it it like has some type of like rock structure or reef or something like that so it's like it goes sharp and then a big long flat and then sharp again there's two different areas that can be really good to set up on there. You can set up close, tight to the inside of the flat along that rock structure that comes down, or you can set up on the edge of that structure where it starts to go down the other way. So like picture it goes like really fast from 120 feet to 70 feet, and then it goes really, really slow, say from 70 to 68 feet for like a long period of time. And then it goes from like 68 feet to 30 feet. So somewhere in there in that flat, they'll, they'll kind of like circle it on that area. I don't really know the whole scientific thing, right? I'm not obviously not a biologist. I'm just a, a silly fishing YouTuber that likes to fish lake trout a lot. So if you're like out set up like that, and again, we'll relate to more if you have more people with you, one guy up on that, you know, on the, the structure, or the one guy in an area close to that structure, and one guy in an area close to this structure. And then if you have like another person, you put one guy in the middle. If you're running some tip-ups, the same thing. You can, you can set up on one side and then run some tip-ups kind of along there. So that is like a definitely like a really, really good key Laker spot right now spine but maybe later i'll fish some kind of flat like that i haven't really decided yet what i'm going to do in the next couple days okay they're both small i was just starting my heater again because it's warm enough in here i shut it off for a bit and it's dropping down and a fish picked it up and another fish is coming in and yeah little guy though he's better than just sitting here all day and catching nothing i guess even catching a few here and there this is where I'd be disappointed, though, if a big one swam by, though, right now. Okay, you are little. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, they didn't have to get wet. I like it. Once we're dropping down, let's talk about another lake trout spot. A sharp, sharp drop-off. Right, literally, on that drop-off itself, whether it's a rock wall, whether it's, uh, a, <clears throat> excuse me, like a sand esker, a sand slope, something like that. A sharp drop off can be really, really good. They'll cruise that drop off, pushing up bait fish, uh, using it as a travel route type of thing. So anything like say from 20 to 100 feet, you know, anywhere in there, it could be 50 to 80 feet. It could be 20 to 40 feet, but a, a really good sharp drop off if you set up right on the edge of it. I've never fished those spots a lot in the past with uh, a regular flasher just because I find it obviously a little bit more annoying because you have a huge dead zone. But with live imaging, I will probably fish from spots like that in the future because you can set up on the edge of it and you can see everything that's going on. You're not going to have any dead zone. So sharp, sharp drop-offs can be really good as well. 
Still lacking fish, definitely. Talk about one more kind of like key structure idea for you here while I'm messing with this little fish. And then hopefully catch a couple more and talk about some really good lakes for lake trout fishing. But the last structure I'll talk about what's called a saddle where you have high point, low point, high point. And again, these, these depths can all, all change. I find the saddles to be a little bit better when they get to be around that 70 to 90 feet somewhere in there. And then your high points are like 20 to 50, 20 to 60, somewhere in there, right? Like the saddles don't, aren't as good when you have like a high point of 10 feet and then a low point of 30. Usually the saddles are better, the, the deeper area there. And they'll travel those, those saddles in between all the time high pressure systems especially i find they're going to be in the deeper water something like that for sure and uh like right now actually there's a high high sun and stuff like that no no cloud cover it was like i kind of wish i was in a saddle whereas like tomorrow i'm scheduled to have i think overcast so this spot here where i'm at the the top of the the spine type of thing the peak might have a better opportunity being with it being a cloud cover so saddles are the fourth uh, location tip, I guess we'll call it. Oh, it's a fish. Oh, looks a little bit better too. Not big, big, but looks nice. Nice, got him. Hopefully, stay butt maybe. Maybe it's not that decent type of thing. Hard to tell. Just looks like because it was uh, coming in so quick. Looked a little bit wider type of thing, but there's fish. I think this is fish four or five of the day. Four maybe, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Dark one. Dark one. The aggressive one. Okay. Okay. He's got that old tube jig. Just inhaled. Well, this guy, super, super aggressive. Can't tell if he got some water on the lens. He might have. But dark, aggressive fish right there. Holy. See ya. Okay. You're not happy. I get it. Well, at least I put another one on the board. Got the jig back down there. And I think it's time, oh, I was just gonna say, it's time to talk about some some lakes for lake trail fishing and, and boom, oh, missed him. Missed him, or he missed me, got him maybe this time. Okay, got him right now, aha. Well, they come in flurries like that. Definitely see that more often than not. I was just, just about to say, let's talk about some lakes that are out there for lake trail fishing through the ice. One lake uh, that comes to mind that's gaining a lot of popularity in the last couple of years, and it's actually in the States, is Fort Peck. There's uh, quite a few videos on, U videos on YouTube you can find. And like I said, Fort Peck is just gaining a lot of popularity over the last couple of years. Lake trail fishing is definitely catching on more and more, it seems like, for sure. So Fort Peck is one of them for sure. Oh, easy. Um, coming into... Canada then we'll uh we'll cover the one farthest out east that I know of is Lake of the Woods. I think out there you have a good chance of catching some big fish, but you're not ever gonna go out there and like catch a lot of big fish, or you're not going to catch a lot of fish in a day. Like you obviously can go out there and catch some. It's lake trout fishing. I've only got five or six, I can't remember what it is. So you're not gonna go out there and usually slam 20 or 30 of them. It could happen but usually not. So Lake of the Woods is one that comes to mind for sure. And then going into Manitoba, I consider the top, probably the top four lakes, um, Clearwater Lake, Athapapascow, Kissesseen Lake, and Reed Lake. And all of those lakes actually have outfitters available on them too. Manitoba's got, or Clearwater's got the Clearwater Outfitters, Evergreen Resort. I stayed recently at Rocky Lake Resort. It was a short little sled ride there. At the Papascow has Baker's Narrows Lodge and Viking Lodge on it that you can fish uh, Lake, Lake Athapap. And then Kissesseen, I've stayed in, up there before in the fall time and fished that lake at Kissesseen at, uh, oh, I'm stumbling on the name right now. Keenanau, Keenanau Lake Lodge. It might just be Keenanau Lodge even, but it's Keenanau up there. And then Reed Lake up at uh, Brian Bogdan's place at Wacusco. It's just a short little trailer ride over to Reed Lake. So those are like the top four lakes in Manitoba that probably see the most amount of fishermen for sure. I'm sure there's some wicked backcountry lakes you can sled to for some good opportunities, but those are just the four that I, that I know of. 
And then in Saskatchewan, there's a couple in Saskatchewan, a Cold Lakes one. It's kind of on the Alberta Saskatchewan border. I'm pretty sure most of it's in Saskatchewan though. It's a pretty popular lake. You're not going to go there and catch a big fish. Like if you catch a 35, 36 inch, like you've done really, really well for that lake, but you can go up there and get big numbers, especially January, early season of a chance to catch a pile of Lakers through the ice. There's La Ronge. La Ronge is a little bit more harder to access, but there is a lodge there on summer. I can't remember what it's called. But Larange has opportunity of big lake trout. And the last one in Saskatchewan that's gaining a lot of popularity the last couple of years. And there's actually a couple lodges that are starting to run ice fishing trips out of there too. They have you have to like sled into the lodge though. It's I think about a hundred kilometer ride, so probably 60 miles or something like that. But they're seeing lots of fishermen there and there's a couple lodges there that are running ice fishing trips i know one of them actually has a plane that they're bringing people in too so maybe that could be an option i'm not going to list any names you got to do the research on your own but cree lake is uh probably one of the best options for big big lakers i shouldn't say that lake athapapascal at baker's narrows this year those boys have been just smashing and girls too there's a uh, emily there's a crew of guides there so i, I don't want to single anybody out when i say guys the guys and girl emily daryl mac uh christian scotty and then ken also guides as well those guys have been smashing big lakers this year like i know of a few over 44 inches that have been caught on that lake this year so cree lake in saskatchewan and lake athapapascal in manitoba are probably two of like the best options for big big lake trout lake athapap baker's narrows is way easier to get to than cree lake is though oh oh got this little guy got him going right by his friend there too haha -ha! gone haha haha -ha! <laughs> -ha! fish way way up there Oh, there's one there too. No, I don't want to go for one up top. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I saw one up at the top. And then I was racing up there to get there. And another one here hit me on the way up. That's funny. <laughs> Work on the water column, baby. Work on the water column. Nothing to call home about, but it's some action. Well, that will wrap up my day. It wasn't fast and furious. I caught a nice one early, a 39 incher right off the start. That's not like a great big giant one, but it's a beautiful big lake trout. There's no doubt about it. We talked a little bit about location in that sense. A couple lakes, I uh, definitely gave some hot lakes in this video for sure. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to start here in this spot and then I'm going to probably midday, I'm gonna pack up and try a different location for a day or two and just continue on with our quest for a big giant mama lake trout. Like I'm talking like 46 inches north. That's the goal anyway, it's to break my PB. It's the whole goal of this mission. If it happens, great. If it doesn't, I'll just have to keep trying. But uh, maybe tomorrow we'll cook up a lake trout somewhere in this in this whole series. We will kick up, cook up a lake trout. I'll show you how to clean them. And yeah, so thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to get outside.